Hi, Ike. Thank you for joining me here. Thanks for having me. We're at um, Beyond Class, which is a two-person exhibition at Club Gallery in Miami, Florida. Uh, right now, we are surrounded by uh, photographs um, and paintings, uh, paintings by an artist named Brian Bat and photographs that uh, I made. And uh, yeah, let's have a little chat, shall we? Yes, absolutely, ready. Um, yeah, I was just thinking to set the stage, it would be really interesting. What I thought about first when thinking about talking to you was, what's like some of the first images that come to mind when you think about South Florida since that's so much connected to your work or oh, that's where it's centered? Yeah, I mean, when I think of South Florida, um, the image that comes to mind is a film still from a movie called River of Grass by Kelly Reichardt. Uh huh. Uh, but I also think of like images that sort of float through my memory from hikes through Big Cypress or, you know, airboat rides in the Everglades. Um, I think of Barry Jenkins' Moonlight um, and film stills from that movie. And I also think of um, images from memories I have of like childhood. Um, being young and spending time sort of between like school and the responsibility of homework in that sort of like in between space when I was sort of just free to explore, um, to be in big open natural spaces and adventure around, you know, with friends or by myself. You know, the sun was always sort of slowly starting to set around that time right after school, right before homework. And yeah, some of those memories are sort of very formative and often something that I reference back to when I'm thinking about making my work. Well, we're definitely going to get to the to the lighting and also to the flora fauna and all these aspects of South Florida in a bit. But like as your point of departure, like this exploration, is that do you think like a defining part of your vision as a photographer? I think, yeah, absolutely. Um, exploration certainly defines kind of the attitude um, that I bring into making my photographs, um, both in the sense that, um, you know, you could say I'm exploring place by venturing out beyond the confines of my neighborhood and photographing in natural environments, you know, all around the state, um, but also in the sense that um, exploration is really defining like the spirit that I'm bringing um, when I'm inviting, you know, the people I photograph uh, to meet me, you know, we're bringing a sort of exploratory spirit as opposed to one that's strictly defined, right? Like we're more interested in being open-minded um, to letting chance influence the photographs that we're making um, and having a kind of, you know, essentially a collaborative energy about the process. Well, you're saying so many things that I want to pick up on. But first of all, I think spirit is, is a beautiful way to start because there's certainly a lot of energy and spirit and movement, but also calmness and, and a sense of beauty. And I mean, you capture a lot of youth in these, in these images. And you said in many interviews that you really want to have some kind of counter vision of, of you know, defying like stereotypes. So I wanted you to get a little bit into that spirit of defying stereotypes first. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, when I, when I speak about like the stereotypical um, narratives that sort of surround, you know, the idea of Florida or the place of Florida or the people of Florida, you know, I often think of like the visual narratives that would, um, you know, be paired with like a news headline that might say something to the effect of like Florida man, you know, did X, mm -hmm. Y, Z, right? Um, or it's like visual narratives that are paired with like politically uh, charged, you know, news headlines um, or headlines that kind of um, speak to like the climate crisis is happening in Florida. Yeah. And so those um, are what I found were kind of in the popular conscious relating to Florida, but um, they didn't necessarily speak to my own experience or the experience of the people who I 
photograph. And so in reflecting on what was kind of circulating around, you know, I, I felt a sort of urge to kind of respond or, or, or correct what I felt was being said about this place, you know, this right. place that is so near and dear to me. So, you know, in the photographs, we are constructing these worlds that um, are essentially a reflection of our own experience of Florida, not necessarily what we saw, you know, circulated in the media. So when you say our experiences, obviously a lot of them also come from the people that we see in the images, right? Because you have a very collaborative approach. How do you select the who is in the images? Well, um, specifically maybe talking about the works we see in the series. Yeah. I mean, in this body of images, uh, I'm working with young artists, young activists, and, you know, creative friends of mine um, from the South Florida community. Um, as far as like the selection process, you know, um, I'm always interested in photographing people who are in that creative sort of world or that creative line of work um, because I feel that from one creative to another, we're able to sort of have a dialogue and I'm interested in that. You know, I'm interested in the dialogue informing the photographs, you know, less so than um, letting my sole kind of auteur, authorial um, vision direct things. I want to see you know, um, how a collective authorship can produce interesting photographs, right? So, you know, I'm selecting these young artists, inviting them to participate um, and letting them really, you know, inform how we go about photographing. Yeah. Well, a lot of them as artists and you said as activists as well have a, a voice and a vision as well. Like, and you talked about representing Florida and like, you know, What's a, what do you think is your responsibility as a, as an artist, as a photographer, to kind of contribute to a dialogue when if it's political or, like we said, climate change or whatever else it may be that's relevant, especially also to the state? Well, you know, as a photographer, um, I feel I have several responsibilities, right? Um, you know, speaking specifically to um, what you're asking, like, politically... Um, you know, I, I feel I have a responsibility or just a, an urge, like an existential need in a way to um, respond to what's happening in the world around me in my work, right? So, um, you know, another responsibility also is to the people who I'm photographing. Um, I feel it's important to craft a sort of comfortable environment for my collaborators. So, you know, I'm you know, kind of front seating their comfort. I'm front seating like they're feeling like they're being seen and being seen in the way that they want to be seen, as opposed to say front seating like my vision, you know. Right. Um, so, you know, between that responsibility to respond, to be aware of both what's happening in the present moment and the history that came before us, and so, you know, the collaborators who I'm photographing you know, I'm really trying to kind of, um, you know, segue through those different responsibilities in my practice. So representation really also matters, especially when you're looking at the importance of portraiture and the work you do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, representation obviously plays that key role in the sense that, you know, I'm inviting um, people from the community um, who come from all different sort of backgrounds and walks of life. And so I have to be sensitive to what an image of them could mean, um, not only f for them and the people in their orbit, but for other people interacting with those photographs and how like their understanding of um, community or of, you know, people can be informed, you know, by pictures. What I'm, what I'm often very interested in for my own practice as well is the connection between identity, cultural markers, and landscape or space. So I think that's something that I'm particularly interested in looking at your work. Like, what are your considerations that you have when creating and how identity and landscape connect? Well, you know, I can speak to one specific one that I feel has kind of um, been a through line in my practice over the years. And that's sort of like the connection between queer identity and natural space. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
you know, specifically in this past year, um, I photographed a portfolio here in the state of Florida of young activists, young queer activists who um, in their individual cities and towns were uh, organizing um, in response to a bill that eventually was passed into law um, referred to as the Don't Say Gay uh, Bill and then Don't mm-hmm. Say Gay Law. Yeah. Um, and with those queer activists um, who I invited to meet me in sort of parks and forests and by rivers and natural spaces near um, where they live and where they were organizing, you know, I was interested in exploring this relationship between um, them and the natural space. Um, I was interested in um, creating a sort of counterpoint to um, this idea that's sort of popularized in kind of the right wing space that queerness is nurtured, like as opposed to being part of someone's nature, right? So um, in response, you know, I sought to kind of um, invite these activists to the natural space to show how similar they were um, on a visual level to nature, you know, to make a very simple visual statement about the relationship to the two to say that, you know, queer identity or queerness is natural, you know? Um, So, yeah, that's kind of worked as a through line um, in the practice and you know, inform new work that I'm making as well as some of the work in the show. I was going to say, I assume this is a continuation. There will be a continuation to that. Um, and in terms of, you know, having a continuation, because this is certainly not, I mean, it's not a new conversation, but it's also one that unfortunately is not behind us, right? And as you said, in Florida was the new, the new laws and the current leadership. It's certainly something we hear a lot more about. Do you have some concrete plans on what you how you want to approach that or it's just fluid and still an ideation well um as far as like an approach you know i think the very least that i can do as an artist um is to respond you know respond to like um changes in the political space that i'm you know not satisfied with in my work um but yeah, that could grow and change, right? Like um, right now, activism is something that's important and influential to me, but, you know, by no means am I an artist activist. Um, I will kind of use photography to, um, you know, support um, and really kind of spotlight the work of activists, especially those here in in the state. Um, But at the moment, you know, I can't necessarily say that I'm, um, organizing in the way that they are. So I'm, you know, maybe offering a bit of a, a helping hand where I can. Right. I mean, as a form of storytelling, right, is there, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, like I think there might be some interesting ways to do some collaboration where you also have some additional components, right, um, on, on, on sharing everyone's stories. Like I'm just looking at these images and I want to know so much more about what everyone is doing. Right. I mean, part of like the beauty, I guess, of uh, working with artists or activists or creative friends, as opposed to say photographing models, is that you know they have their own worlds. Like you're saying, they have their own stories to tell, and so um, you know, I hope that one could enter into this show and the space and become interested in some of the collaborators who I'm photographing, and then you know, use it as a jumping-off point to maybe. Um, find their work or, um, you know, explore what it is that each individual person is doing. Um, you know, in a way like, you know, yes, we're sitting here in, um, a show of photographs that, um, I made, but at the same time, like we're sitting here, um, in the presence of kind of a collective, um, authorship, you know, yeah. you know, each of these, um, uh, people in my photographs, I think of as collaborators as opposed to like my subjects. Subjects, yeah. As you said, jumping off, I was actually looking at one of the images of someone jumping. I mean, there's so much movement in all these images, so much continuation as well. I'm like, I want to talk a little bit about like technically how you approach that. Like, how do you, um, you know, capture so much movement in your work? Well, or is that intentional? Even I don't know. You know, well, I want to point out one thing that you said, um, or one word that you used um, that I've been kind of 
chewing on and thinking about a lot recently, which is that idea of like the photographer that captures. Okay. And and it's no dig or or or, or <laughs> stab at you by Congress. You know, I, I fall into that same kind of line of speaking myself and it's um you know vocabulary that's sort of like accompanied the photographic tradition for like Uh, the longest time right but um you know when i think about like what it is that i'm doing with um the collaborators who i'm photographing i don't necessarily feel like we're sort of capturing a moment or like you know um taking a photograph or like you know shooting together like those kinds of words subject as well i feel like belong to a more kind of almost imperialist type of dialogue. And so when I think about the work, it's more in the sense of being receptive to, you know, say you um, came to uh, meet me in a natural park and we were photographing together and you were kind of projecting a sense of beauty, then it's sort of my role to be receptive to that, not okay. necessarily to capture it. So so what's I feel the phrasing that you use? You know, I would say like the photographs describe a sense of beauty, right? Okay. Um, and not to be, you know, so nitpicky. Or... As acknowledged, you should be. I mean, I, I, you know, and if a dialogue or, or um, verbiage or anything associated with the medium needs to change going forward, then that conversation needs to be had. So That's absolutely true. You know, it's always something that should be in flux in some way. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to like be receptive to those changes and to recognize that like. You know, of course, I'm working in like a visual medium and we're talking about visual art, but like words, language, you know, text like are just as important to people's understanding of photographs and of visual art as, you know, the visual elements themselves. So I think about language and and, and I try to be, you know, I'm not perfect and I slip into the, you know, those ways myself, but you know, I try to be conscientious because I think it's important. No, I mean, and there should be some interna- intentionality behind it as well when you choose how you speak about your work. So, I mean, is there or are there any other conversations that are currently happening in terms of that that maybe people should be aware of? Sure. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not like the resident expert, but I can, you know, shed light on the conversation. Yeah. You know, I'm having with uh, fellow photographers here in South Florida, you know, um, one thing that we speak about often is sort of the ethics of a photographer, you know, for a long time in photographic lineage, um, it wasn't really, um, critiqued when someone went into a community where they didn't belong or didn't grow up and use the camera as a way to sort of pioneer as a way to sort of like capture like we said Mm -hmm. um folks who they found to be you know interesting or um to be you know rare almost in the way that like um a hunter might go into uh, a park and like you know capture a rare animal right so we speak about that and we see how we can change that lineage moving forward so you know ethics um you know thinking about why you're photographing someone um thinking about what it is that you're getting out of it and whether there's an equitable exchange between yeah. you and the person you're photographing, you know, feels important, especially um, within the dialogues that we're having now. Yeah, I mean, especially also if you think, okay, is it is it my story to tell on behalf of someone with or with someone in some instances yeah. or when, you know, when is it not? Like, Yeah, yeah, it's like a question of permission in a way, right? Like, yeah. You know, if you're going to use the camera to kind of um, describe someone else's experience or story, then um, you should make sure that you sort of have their permission to do that. Um, and that that word or that idea of permission, I feel like, can inform a lot of what, you know, I'm doing or what other photographers are doing as they're going out in the world. Like, I sometimes feel as though, you know, when I venture out into Big Cypress or the Everglades or up north to the Springs, you know, I'm taking the time away from from the city, from Miami, from South Florida, and just giving myself that permission to see, you know, which I think is really important, especially as we get kind of caught up in our worlds. Um, uh, it's important to kind of give yourself that permission to see. But that's sort of another 
topic altogether. That is true. No, but it gets us back to the idea of, you know, landscape and connecting to identity and who belongs in what space, quote unquote, belongs, right? Or who has permission to be in a space versus not, or, you know, who is natural to, to a space or not. So I think it, it ties all back together, all these questions that you have to ask yourself yeah. on a consistent basis. Yeah. that I mean, that's part of the reason, you know, why I feel drawn to photograph in natural space because, um, you know, you can't really argue with the fact that in a way anyone or everyone belongs in a natural space, you know, a, a sort of verdant landscape or a um, open environment is somewhere where I feel that we all have a, a, a sense of a belonging connection, um, that there's no kind of differentiation as far as class, um, or, or ethnicity or anything along those lines. So, you know, when we're going out into these natural spaces, for example, like in this body of images, um, we're, we're working with that feeling of kind of openness or, or freedom, you know, that kind of lack of responsibility too, that comes with just being oneself or being connected to yourself and the people around you and the environment around you. Mm -hmm. We're letting that also kind of inform, um, what it is we're describing in the pictures. Yeah. I mean, we could go off on a tangent there because I think there's a lot of um, recent conversations that are happening about what connotations various environments in nature also have for different people based on historical experiences. But I don't think we need to go there. I just, um, like, as I wanted to know a bit more about some of the spaces that you choose because, you know, in your you have grown up in South Florida, right? Like what um, what are some of your favorite places and spaces to use for your photographs and why? Well, um, that's a great question. You know, one of my favorite um, areas down here to photograph uh, would be Olita River. Okay. It's up in North Miami Beach mm -hmm. uh, off 163rd Street. Um, it's a beautiful state park. Um, it's filled with like evergreen trees. Um, and it's a river that um, opens out to kind of the bay and eventually to the ocean. Um, one of the photographs in the show, it's actually the one right behind me, um, was was made there in Olita River. And, you know, I, I just love that feeling that feels in a way pretty unique to South Florida, though, of course, there are other cities or metropolitan areas that have this. But, you know, that feeling of being able to make a right turn, you know, off of like a, a main road, off of like a, you know, sort of, sort of in an urban environment and be suddenly surrounded by, you know, nature, like that feeling of escape um, within like the hustle and bustle of our usual life is really important. And so somewhere like Alita, that's really right in the mix of um, the city. Uh, yeah, really draws me in. I've been there a few times. I found a beach there once that I didn't expect to find. I didn't, you know, just discovering and walking around. So yeah. I love that. Um, I think in, in, in your book, right, and you can talk a little bit about that as well, um, there were some references to the verse, and uh, you mentioned it actually when we started talking first, um, you know, about this something very special about Florida light, like you mentioned the afternoon or between school and yeah. homework. Like, um, you know, how important is lighting and natural light and, you know, the mood and everything it sets to your work? Yeah, I mean, um, Florida is unique in a way when it comes to light because we live in such a, like, humid environment. And so, you know, when we look at the light here compared to somewhere that's a little bit more dry, you know, what we're literally seeing almost on like a scientific level is that the humidity particles in the atmosphere um, are literally sort of um, breaking down the light. You know, they're, they're, they're preventing the light from being super direct and they're kind of scattering it in a way. So sometimes, you know, especially on a very humid day, you might go out and you might feel like you can kind of feel the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And in that same yeah. way, right, like, you also can kind of see the light, the presence of the light, you know, the kind of haze or aura of it. Um, you know, whether that's informing the way I'm working or not, who's to really say, but 
without a doubt, like I'm photographing within it and without a doubt, it's an environment I grew up in, right? So like, I have to imagine that being someone born in, in Toronto, up in Canada, a relatively sort of gray and green city, you know, then moving here at the age of three, you know, being exposed to this like palpable atmosphere and this palpable light and these like pastel buildings and these wild kind of Floridian textures, you know, must have created some sort of shift in my in my understanding and probably really informed like the way that I'm I'm seeing the world. And so sometimes I think like, you know, whether I'm photographing here in South Florida or, you know, venturing off elsewhere, I'm probably always searching for some kind of strain of that, like uniquely Florida light and that uniquely Florida palette. So the images that we're seeing are all in um, available or published in a book, correct? Um, is it still available? Can you talk a little bit about the book? Sure. I mean, um, that book you're referencing uh, was published in 2020. It's called Tropicana. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a self-published artist book um, that I um, put out in two editions. Um, each edition was of 100, and um, I'm very fortunate to say that they both sold out. That's so. wonderful. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, there are no more copies right now in circulation, but um, part of that process and part of doing a limited edition, um, you know, meant that it would be scarce. And so one of the things that I, I felt was really important was to, you know, in spite of all that, try to make the book readily available in some capacity. Um, so right now, if you go to um, the Library of Congress in D.C. Um, or the Costume Institute Library at the Met in New York, um, or, you know, the Miami-Dade uh, Public Library here, um, and a few others, um, you can find a copy and, oh, you know, flip okay. through it at your, <laughs> I would, there's, uh, That's something. And of course, prints are available at least, right? Sure. Um, of yeah. your work. Is there like a follow-up or anything else planned? Um, as far as this body of images, um. Or a new book with new images? Yes. I mean, there's definitely, um, some new work on the horizon, um. Right now, uh, I'm in the midst of like a two to three year um, ongoing um, process, uh, new work where um, I'm inviting uh, young Floridians um, to join me on extended road trips throughout the state. Um, we're going out to like parks, springs, beaches, natural areas, and um, you know, constructing pictures um, in that environment. So. It's an ongoing body of work. Um, it's not quite ready, and there are a couple more road trips I want to take. But um, yeah, that's kind of the direction um, that I'm heading. It's a progression, you know, using a lot of the same kind of um, tools as this body of images, but going in a slightly different, you know, sort of direction. Oh, what has that experience been for you, like to really explore the entire state of Florida with these um, road trips? I mean, oh, have you done this before you started that body of work, or is that something that's new for you as well? It's very new for me, um, and I think when I say this, a lot of, you know, Miamians or South Floridians might relate to it. You know, growing up in Miami didn't necessarily mean that I was exploring all of Florida, and yeah. um, you know, it came to me as a surprise and a, a little bit of a, a disappointment in a way when I realized how beautiful the state was, and when we think about you know, what's going on right now, right? Like um, the shadow of climate threat is constantly getting yeah, bigger. Um, and so a lot of these natural spaces um, are changing or are destined to be changed completely, you know, within our lifetime. So not only is it like so exciting and beautiful to get out there and see these things, but, um, you know, considering, you know, my practice as a photographer and wondering how I can kind of, um, contribute to the the fight against climate crisis you know the question of like can i use these photographs to record these natural spaces you know or in this body yeah. of images we're often thinking like can the photograph be a road map a possible like road map to how people will exist in natural space you know in the future um yeah all, all of that is kind of circulating around in, in our brains as we're as we're going out on these these like six seven eight person road trips you know around the state right so that's a bit of a balance between like looking forward how can we you know make that roadmap but also an archiving right yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, photographers, photography, um, photographs can sort of do multiple things at once, right? You know, oftentimes they're sort of um, telling the truth, especially in a sort of documentary tradition or a reportage tradition. But at the same time, like even those photographs, you know, we know are not always telling the truth, right? You know, sometimes they're sort of um, photographed from someone's subjective perspective, right? So that, you know, photographs can kind of tell the truth, tell a lie. And to get off this tangent back to what you're asking about, you know, um, you know, these photographs as, as far as being a record and also like a, a possible projection, you know, of our ideals or of our, um, aspirations, you know, is, is something that, that, that can be balanced, you know, within a single, single image, you know, it can kind of record the space as it is, or like when you're asking about beauty earlier, we can kind of describe the beauty as it is while also being very sort of forward thinking, you know, and, and, and creating a space for our aspirations for the future to kind of be palpable and be, be expressed. And even that can be up for definition, right? Who, who sees beauty and what and how do they define it? So yeah, I think, um, same as with the archives, like who is, who is keeping the archive? Who is it for? Yeah. Is it about? Absolutely. You know? I mean, it, it, in your work, you know, I feel you're, you're very sort of, um, aware of like the shifts that are happening where, you know, perhaps like in years prior, decades prior, um, the who of these questions was someone who maybe the who isn't necessarily right now, right? You know, yep. um, we're both kind of very involved or trying and working to be involved in like the scene and the artist community here in South Florida. And so um, perhaps you more so than me have noticed like ships, right? In that scene and, and um, yeah, I wonder. I hope so. so. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I do hope so. I think that's a question that I mean, I ask myself and I hope most people do too, uh, who are in the community, like when you do any kind of work, like, okay, what's your, what's your motivation? And again, like for me as someone who also writes about art, I often have to say, okay, do I want to write about this topic or about this artist? Yes. At this moment, is it my story to tell or is it something I should collaborate with someone on, you know? And I think same as what we brought up by me using a term that wasn't actually quite correct anymore. It's like these things need to shift and change. And we are in a, in a community where we have to be mindful of people's identities, people's languages. I mean, that applies anywhere, really. And I think um, we just always have to ask ourselves that every single day things change. And um, if that's why collaboration to me is also really important, because I think it gets you into a position where even when you're not maybe the main person to tell a story, you can be part of creating a scenario where that story can still be told in a meaningful way. Um, and also always keep the audience in mind or audiences. It doesn't just have to be one, right? I think um, all of that matter. Yeah. Constant exercise and thinking and paying attention and listening. Yeah, right? Like yeah. what I hear you saying is almost like, you know, being a good person, which means listening, you know, being sensitive, being attentive, like applies to artists or people in the art community too, right? Like we yeah. have to think how we can kind of just be good people at the end of the day. Yeah, you think, yeah, I don't think everyone should be a challenge. <laughs> but I do think the South Florida, at least in my experience, and I've been here for 10 years now, I do find that the artist artistic community in a way is really supportive. I haven't found too many instances where people, you know, where that was not the case. Yeah. I find like people are really invested in having like everyone around them grow as well and um, show up for each other in a way. Yeah. I guess like compared to a place like New York or Los Angeles, you know, South Florida has art history, but perhaps like the lineage or all the commotion around it isn't as deep, right? And so... I know for myself, like creating that community and being supportive, like you're saying, is really important because I want, um, you know, the people around me to feel like they do have that lineage to fall back on, that we are creating um, a record of our community so that, yeah. you know, not only can we feel supported, but then, you know, a kid right now who's 12, 13, thinking about getting into the arts can, you know, feel like there are other people like them you yeah. know, who grew up here, who are living here 
and who are, um, you know, making art, you know, as a kid, like, I never really felt like I had an example of someone here in South Florida, Mm -hmm. well, Florida, you know, on a grander scale that was like photographing or making art, you know, um, and I, I want to be able to kind of, um, give that example right. to someone else. And part of that means like, you know, supporting all the artists around me. Cause if it's not me, maybe it'll be someone else. And, um, if there's community, we can kind yeah. of, I mean, stronger, we're all part, we all have a part to play in creating a healthy arts ecosystem, right? Because if it's just one or two people, it's not going to be a healthy system or environment that can sustain someone's practice, especially as career artists, right? So if you want that, we really all have to kind of contribute and play our role. And I think then, I think that's come a long way even in the 10 years that I've been here. Yeah. I, I can't speak much. I've never worked full time in any other US um, city, but I do think that there's a lot of possibilities still here and it's grown quite a bit and there's still a lot more to go, but I do feel it's um it's the right energy, generally speaking. Mm-hmm. So you find that like um, one of the, big shifts, right, would be the kind of um, increase of support, people supporting one another, um, institutions supporting artists. Are there any other shifts that you've noticed as far as like when you got to Miami and South Florida and, you know, where Mm. things are right now? I think there is definitely a lot of recognition for the artists and the artistry here. also on a global stage, it's not so much, oh, we're showing Miami artists because of South Florida artists because we're in South Florida and we owe people that, but also because the conversations that are being had um, are relevant beyond the local, right? And that's not just like, to me, it's always like, okay, you don't need to invite artists to have a conversation about art. You know, anything, the art is not about art for the most part, right? And you kind of have an, an artist on the table for any conversation, no matter what uh, in life, politics, whatever it may be. And there's some uh, an artist who has something really significant and relevant to say. And I, Miami is specific, of course, that we have the connection to South America, the Caribbean. There's a large, um, many, um, you know, diaspora um, communities here. And all of that coming together is relevant beyond the local community. And I I do think that there is a lot more national, but also global recognition of the artistic voices coming out of the community. Yeah, and and South And I hope that observation is true. (laughs) I think so, it feels that way at least, as someone, you know, within it. um, You know, I guess time will tell for for everyone outside of, you know, South Florida, how that really plays out, but you know, we also are kind of a, a crazy, like, local example of this global phenomenon that is, like, climate change. Yeah. You know, and so um, it's not for the best reason, but, you know, South Florida artists or Miami artists um, will continue to be sort of examples of how, you know, we can respond to a growing, a growing sort of climate threat as time, you know, moves on. And Yeah. I guess, yeah, there is an increase in artists also paying attention to that. Um but I also think there is a lot of the, you know, a lot happening in terms of getting local communities involved in the arts and not making them feel excluded in a way, you know, whether that's um, with activations and programmatic efforts and museums, galleries or pop-up things like I know you've been doing quite a bit as well to really get various audiences involved and don't just do storytelling for them, but with them in a way. Right, that's kind of represent representing their own experiences in life. So I think that has increased as well. Yeah, it's so important. Like, you know, obviously you work and operate in the arts, but you're also a fan, right? Like, of course. And, <laughs> yeah. and I would say the same about myself. And you know, I think at a certain point, like we all just, as people operating and working in the arts, we all just want to give that experience that we yeah. know we've had as fans or as just like young people discovering the arts, you know, we want to give that to like as many people as possible because it is so yeah, beautiful. And honestly, it's hard to describe sometimes in words what, what that experience can be and, you know, what it can mean for um, someone coming of age or growing up or discovering themselves. Can mean everything, yeah. 
and we get back to the representation right as well and, and seeing yourself in the art but yeah I see art like for a living and I see art for joy on my own time it makes no difference it makes every day better so oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that one is so funny. I guess you're pretty lucky it's not true yeah so I'm I'm also just so grateful to be in again be in the space with with your work again and I haven't I've seen some of these works before and it's been a while so I'm grateful to be back here talking with you and yeah. surrounded by your work thank you and excited for you know what's next as well for you thank you so much thanks for being here and taking the thank time you. <laughs> more to come yeah yes to be continued